Hey guys, Skylimit here, and welcome back to part two of building a neural network in Scratch from scratch. So if you don't remember from the last video, we basically built a neural network that could run on random weights. But because the weights were random, the answer was just also a random number. So in this video, we'll be making our network better by implementing a training algorithm for the network to adjust its weights and hopefully give us a more sensible and accurate answer. If you haven't seen the last video, I highly suggest you check it out because it contains a lot of information that's relevant, and the link will be in the description for those of you who are curious. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, I really really appreciate it. And with all that said, let's get into it. So before we jump into training, let's first take a look at what we have. If you'll notice, every time I run this program, all of the numbers are just completely random, and that's expected because all of our weights are random. But just to refresh on what we want, we want our network to be able to do basic bitwise operations. For example, if we input 1 and 0, and we want the network to do the OR operator, we want our answer to be 1. So 1, 0 equals to 1. But if I do this, like the network is just giving completely inconsistent answers. And that's because the weights are random. To refine the weights, we have to implement an algorithm called gradient descent. Now this algorithm is used by almost all neural networks nowadays, and although the math behind it is quite complicated, the basic idea is pretty simple. So if I pull up a sketchpad, imagine we have a graph, and the x-axis is one of our weight values, so I'll call this weight 0. And the y-axis is, is our error. What the error is, is basically um, how close our network's prediction is to the actual answer. So we want to minimize error because we want an answer as close to the real answer as possible. Now if we draw a visualization of how the error changes as our weight changes, I'll just draw a random curve like this, something like this, and you can see here uh, we just I just drew a completely random curve. Now let's take one point, a completely random point on this curve because remember our weight is random in the beginning. We want to minimize error, so we want to find the lowest point on this graph, which is around here. To get to this point, what gradient descent does is it follows the slope of the graph, or you can say the derivative of the graph, all the way down until it reaches this valley here. And once it reaches this valley, if it's like below a threshold or it's taken too many steps, it'll just stop. And we found our minimum. So this is the target. And to do that, we go down the slope as you see I drew here. What happens when we add multiple weights? Well, adding multiple weights is, is equivalent to like adding multiple dimensions. What I drew here is two dimensional, but if we add one more weight, like weight one, it now becomes three dimensional. And if we add another one, it becomes four dimensional. But this is where the math gets complicated because dealing with multiple dimensions uh, and trying to find the slope of a graph in multiple dimensions takes uh, partial derivatives. But we don't have to worry about that because the math is already done for us. Now going back to our project, the first thing let's do is... So you might be wondering why the video is paused. As I was recording, I realized that training a neural network in Scratch wasn't as straightforward as I originally thought. So instead of the step-by-step -step tutorial that I was planning to do, this video will be more like the last one where I show a time lapse and explain the general steps on how I did it just to save you guys the time from watching me debug for an hour straight. The first thing I did when I started making the training is make the training input and the truth tables. What these are are just the sets of data that our network trains on to become more accurate. From there I started making the train block as you can see here. And inside the gradient descent algorithm, it actually requires you to take the derivative of your activation function, in our case that's sigmoid, so I was also creating a block for that. Now uh, the next thing we had to figure out is to uh, figure out how to track thetas. And if you remember from the last video, the thetas are basically, um, you take the sum of all of the products of the uh, previous layers, uh, activation values, and the weights. without. Um, without wrapping it in the activation function, so that just that raw value. And I just did that by adding extra lines in the run function um, to track that theta value. And the next thing I did is make some auxiliary functions. For example, you see on the screen, get weight index. 
and that just gets the uh, index in the table of the way I want to change to make life easier for me. Now I'm just putting everything together. As you can see here, I utilize the sigmoid derivative function that I just created earlier, along with other ones like get weight index. And I also loop over all of the hidden nodes to adjust the hidden to output weights and loop over all of the input nodes to adjust the input to hidden weights. You might be wondering what all of these random variables I'm using are, like big psi and small psi, and it's a little hard to explain because they're intermediate values in the gradient descent algorithm, but if you want to see the full implementation, the project will be linked in the description. At the end of training, you also have to calculate the total error to see if you, uh, to basically gauge how accurate your network has become. And at a certain point, once you reach a certain error threshold, or go below a certain error threshold, uh, you can just stop the training because that means that your network is accurate enough. At this point in the project, my training block was basically finished. Uh, I had finished coding most of the gradient descent algorithm, and here I just needed to add some finishing touches. I added some weight blocks in between my loops to visualize what's going on and correct some potential bugs that I found. So after finally implementing the training of my network, I decided to test it. But when I ran it, something was immediately wrong. You can see here, even as the iterations are going up, the total error was just staying at the exact same values it was in the beginning. Now this shouldn't be happening because gradient descent should be reducing the total error to make our network more accurate by adjusting the weights. And clearly that wasn't happening. So out of desperation, I started to play around with some of the constants here and I changed, one thing I did is I changed these negative ones both to ones just to see if it did anything. Um, and to my surprise, when I ran it again, magically it started working. You can see here, now the total error is starting to drop uh, very fast as the iterations are going up, which means our network is getting more and more accurate. And even now, I don't know why this works because um, the gradient descent algorithm, usually there's a negative here uh, because you're going down slope. But you know what they say, if it works, it works. So in a second here, you'll see that uh, the total error will reach the threshold value that I set uh, as 2e negative 4. So that's um, 0 0.0002. And once it reaches that value, you can see here now, the training stops on its own, which means that the network got close enough um, in accuracy that we could stop it. And here, after training, I just saved the weights. And now let's try to test uh, the network with each test case. So I trained the network on bitwise OR, which is kind of like addition. So 1, 0 gives 1, 0, 1 gives a 1, 1, 1 gives a 1, and 0, 0, 50, 0. Let's try running on 0, 0 first. So what this should do is give us a value of 0, and let's see what the network predicts. Yep, as you can see, when I put in 0, 0, the network gave us a value of 0 0.02. Now, obviously this isn't exactly 0, but as long as it's close enough to 0, it's considered a success. Now I'm going to try 1, 0, and it should give us close to 1. You can see here it gives us 0 0.99, which is very close to 1, so that's also a success. And let me try 0, 1. And yep, you can see here it gave us a value of 0 0.99 again, which is correct. And finally, if I put in 1, 1, it should give me a value of 1. And you quite, can't quite see the chat bubble here, but if I just drag this circle out a little, you can see here it gave us a value of 0 0.99 as well. So it passed all four of these test cases, and it accurately predicted each and every one. The cool thing about neural networks is you can train it to do whatever you want. It doesn't just have to do one thing. For example, if I wanted to train my neural network to do bitwise AND instead of bitwise OR, all I have to do is change my truth table to reflect that. 1, 0 would give us 0, 0, 1 would give us 0, 1, 1 would, should give us 1, and 0, 0 should give us 0. Additionally, if I want to add more nodes in any layer, for example, if I wanted to, let's just say, have 4 nodes in my hidden layer, which is the middle one, I can just change this to a 4. 
And now let's try to train it on bitwise and and see what happens. After around 28,000 iterations, it finally stopped training. So let's go ahead and see how it did. I'm going to drag back this run and run it on 1 0 first. This should give a 0 because 1 times 0 is 0. Or 1 and 0 is 0. Yeah. Yep, and you can see it gave us a value of 0 0.01, which is really close to 0. Now let's try 1 1. This should give us a 1. Yep, you can see here it gave us 0 0.99, which is really close to 1. Now I'm going to try 0, 0. And you can see here it gave us a value of 0 0.001, which is insanely close to 1. With all that said, this project doesn't necessarily have to stay within the limits of bitwise operators. For example, you could very well make a neural network that can recognize handwritten digits, or even chat with humans. Sound familiar? Anyways, I'm really happy with how this turned out because I didn't think that it was possible to train a neural network on scratch, but obviously, this project disproved that. It really comes to show that if you put your mind to something and have the time and determination to do it, anything is possible on this platform. Alright, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments about this project, this neural network, or anything in general, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!